Hey everybody, this is D Hunter bringing another action figure review. Today we're going to be looking at the DST or Diamond Sight Toys Westworld Man in Black Battle Damage action figure. This here is a PX exclusive, which means it's only available through various online retailers. They already made a regular Man in Black figure about six months ago, but here's the bloodied up Battle Damage version. So let's go ahead and check out the packaging here. As you can see at the top, warning, children under three, not for you. Here he is in the package, he's got a removable hat, looks like a key card, what looks like a P90 submachine gun, a knife, probably a collector stand, a whole bunch of interchangeable hands, and then here's the figure with blood all over him. Nothing really much going on the bottom or either side. Then the back here. There's a barcode in case that helps anybody. And you can see another couple figures from the original wave. So with no further ado, let's open him up. And I did want to add two things before I open this guy. Number one, this being a PX exclusive available through certain online retailers. I got mine at Amazon.com. I pre-ordered him about six months ago when the first wave dropped. And here he is. And then number two, one of my complaints about the Series 1 of Westworld figures, they either didn't come with guns or they were permanently attached to their holsters. And I really, really hate when guns are permanently attached to holsters. I believe there was some kind of agreement between either the production company or the actors to ask them not to include guns. So this guy here appears to still have his permanently sculpted pistol or revolver into his holster, but he comes with a separate submachine gun. What sense does that make? If they don't want them to have guns, and they won't let you have removable guns, why would they let you include a separate submachine gun? Just a little food for thought. Alright, now that we got this figure out of the package, here he is with all of his accessories laid out. He does come with a removable hat, a submachine gun, some kind of computer card, a knife, a collector stand, and six interchangeable hands, totaling eight different hands. But before we look at the accessories, let's check out the actual figure. Looks very similar to the previous Man in Black figure. Ed Harris, the actor. This one here is bloodied up, damaged. Even got a little bit of blood in his neck there, liking that. Looks like we've got some differences on his outfit. This sort of tie-like thing is definitely different than the previous release. Looks like there's a little bit of damage under there, perhaps. Like what I'm seeing so far, blood all over this guy. Same permanently stuck revolver in his holster, very annoying. He's got this sheath for his knife. More blood splats all over him, looks like some sculpted damage into his leg, not just paint, pretty nice. Double joint knees, blood in his pants, blood all over his jacket, definitely like what I'm seeing here. And then here he is, broken down as far as he can go, with all of his removable parts detached. So next, let's check out all of his accessories, starting off with the boring stuff, like a stand. This here is an oval, it's got a peg on the top for the pegles on their feet, pretty much hollow, nothing special going on with this thing. Now I'm not much of a stand guy, I prefer my figures to stand up on the shelf on their own, so this is going to go into a huge box, never to be seen again. Next, let's check out his four pairs of hands. Here he is, wearing his first pair of hands, his fisted hands. Here he is wearing his second pair of hands. These are some trigger finger hands, able to hold weapons. The previous Man Black release didn't have a gun at all. This one has a permanently attached revolver, which is super annoying, but it does come with a submachine gun as well. Here he is with his third pair of hands. These are some gripping hands, a little bit smaller than the other pair. Should be able to hold his knife or his key card or tablet or whatever that thing is. And here's his fourth pair of hands, another pair of gripping hands, a little bit of a larger grip than the other pair, which is kind of odd as he has no accessories required for these hands. His knife and his key card tablet and even his hat will fit into the other gripping hands. Now let's check out his hat. This is identical to the previous Man in Black's hat release. 
This thing's made of a softer material. It's definitely bendy. You can move the flap around. It's got a line around the top there. Here he is wearing his hat. Fits on his head very nicely. Stays pretty sturdy, doesn't fall off. He can take off his hat and hold it with his gripping hands. Looking pretty good there. Next, let's look at this little key card or microchip, or maybe this is supposed to be the folding tablet from the show, but it doesn't really look like that. Nice little bit of detail on there. And here he is holding the card. Here's his large knife. This thing here has a little bit of an indent on the blade. The handles, brown, gold, and black. Here he is, holding his knife. And one feature I do like about his knife, he's got a functioning sheath or holster for it. Here on the side, his knife can stay in there. I love a functioning holster for a weapon. <clears throat> And here is his machine gun. This thing is mostly red, a little bit of black, nice scoping detail on it. Overall, not a bad looking gun. And here he is holding his weapon. The trigger fits into the trigger slot pretty nicely there. And this guy's articulated enough that he can almost put his hand onto his pistol in the holster. Had this pistol been removable, he'd be able to hold it, put it in and out of the holster, if it was removable. And I do like how his jacket is sort of pulled back, exposing his gun and holster, almost like he's trying to intimidate somebody or tell them something. Here's an accessory that did not come with this figure. This is a six-shooter from the McFarlane Fortnite line. This gun looks good style-wise with this guy. Fits in his hand perfect. This is going to be my gun for this man in black. And here's another accessory that did not come with him, but I thought worked great to enhance this figure. You got a man in black with an all-black horse. Westworld, a show that's sort of based off Wild Wild West. It's great to have a horse that'll work for this guy. This horse here came with a Sleepy Hollow Headless Horseman figure. And I actually have enough different black horses to accommodate both the Battle Damaged and Original Man in Black. This other horse here is a Lord of the Rings Nazgul horse. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at his accessories, as well as a couple of accessories you can use to enhance this figure, nice let's check out the height of this guy. So from bottom to top, He's sitting right at about 7.0 inches, which is going to translate to about 18 centimeters. Next, let's check out his articulation. So starting with his head here, of course, you can go from side to side. You can look down about that far, up about that far. Shoulders on a ball joint, then we got pretty much a full 90 degrees, up, down, around, all that good stuff. Bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows. Then go all the way in. His wrist here can rotate around and it's going to be hinged as well. He does have a ball joint in his torso here. It's going to allow him to rotate from side to side. It's also going to give him a tiny bit of in and out motion. Not very much though. He doesn't have a traditional waist swivel. This is what's going to have to do for that. His legs here, they can go out not quite 90 degrees, but pretty far. Not a ball joint, but a similar type concept. Legs go forward, about that far, back, really not at all. Double jointed knees, and go all the way back. Then his foot here, it can rotate from side to side, and it can go up and down as well. As far as tilting, you got that covered too. Next, let's check out the reuse between him and the previous standard Man in Black release. These are pretty much the same figure, except the new one is battle damaged. Absolutely no differences with the head there. Moving into the jacket area, it's exactly the same, except it's got red blood splot all over it. Same with the arms and hands. One noticeable difference in the middle here. They both have the vest. 
but his a little bit damaged, scuffed up. Then he has this long sort of tie thing and it's outside the vest, unlike his. That is a pretty large difference there. Moving further down, pretty much same stuff going on here. One noticeable difference down here, he actually has sculpted damage and not just blood all around him. Beyond that, everything's the same. Next, let's check this guy out compared with some other action figures, starting with some other Westworld figures. And I know we just looked at them together, but here he is next to the standard non-battle damaged man in black. Here he is next to the first assortment of Diamond Select Westworld figures. We've got Robert Ford, Man in Black, and then Dolores Abernathy. Here he is next to the Walgreens exclusive Outlaw Dolores. And here he is next to the entire Diamond Select Westworld collection so far. I believe Series 2 is hitting pretty much any day now. And there's also going to be another Walgreens exclusive. Here he is, next to a couple of Diamond Select figures from the film Dark Tower. Coincidentally, the guy on the left is also called the Man in Black, also made by Diamond Select Toys. And on the right hand side, we've got the Gunslinger. These guys also have sort of a semi Wild West theme to them. And then here's the Man in Black and the Gunslinger facing off on horses. Here he is, next to another Diamond Select figure that sure reminds me of the Man in Black. This here is Victor Zaz from the TV show Gotham. Victor Zaz here also sure could have used a bloodied variant. Here he is, next to a Mattel, DC Universe Classics, Gentleman Ghost, and Jonah Hex figure, also Western themed. And here he is, getting in the middle of what appears to be a shootout between these two guys. Next, let's check this guy out compared with some other action figure lines from different various companies to see how he fits in both scale and style wise in case you want to know which lines you can mix him with. Here he is with some of his DST or Diamond Select Toys brothers. In front of you are five different lines from Diamond Select. And here he is with some McFarlane Toys action figures. And then here with some NECA figures. Then, with some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. And here, with some Mattel wrestling figures. Being that this Man in Black figure is from DST, their 7 inch scale, he seems to fit in pretty good with the Diamond Select, McFarlane, NECA, DC Direct, and Mattel wrestling crowds. And here he is, next to some Mezco 112th cloth soft goods action figures. Here, next to some Mattel, DC Universe Classics, and Multiverse figures. Then, with some Mafex figures. Next, with some Hasbro, Marvel Legends. And then, here he is, next to some SH Figure Arts action figures. So overall, I think this is a pretty cool figure. I was pretty fond of the original Men in Black figure. And I think they handled the battle damage and bloodied up parts pretty nicely. I really liked that they sculpted some of it and made some alterations to the figure versus simply just painting some red on top of him. I think the Ed Harris likeness is pretty good. One thing I don't like about the figure, the fact that his gun is permanently attached to his holster, that is just so annoying. They come with trigger fingers. It sure seems like that wasn't the original plan and so they forced their hand. What I read was either the studio or some of the actors demanded not to have loose gun accessories with the figures, which is absolutely ludicrous, especially considering this guy still comes with a loose separate gun. I must say that his paint app, sculpt, and articulation are very nice. If I were to rate this figure, I'd probably give it a 7.5 out of 10. I definitely like this figure. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.